Live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. And off the top, we're continuing to follow the latest developments in an on-campus shooting today at Texas A&M University in Commerce. Police say two women were killed, a child wounded when shots were fired inside a campus dorm. University police say officers responded to a call at 1017 this morning. That's when they found those two women in one of the rooms, a boy about two years old also in a room. He was taken to a hospital at last check, at last check rather in stable condition. The university issued a shelter in place order after that discovery, but it has since been canceled. This campus not far from Dallas. It's still unclear at this time whether the two women were students at the university. As for the shooter, that person has not been identified, nor has there been any word on an arrest. To other news locally, a woman says her husband had to be rushed to the hospital after a CPS Energy power line fell and caused a fire that burned some of her property and others. Today, those power lines are back up, but a burn trail and some charred landscaping left behind serve as reminders of the scary situation. Devin Clark takes us back to that scene. These humongous fat wires this fat and it was jumping the literally the, the wires were jumping with with fire. Ramona King says when she noticed fire burning outside in her yard on Mercury Drive in Midland yesterday, it was very scary. She jumped right into action. So I was hollering for my two grandchildren to help me get my husband out of the house because he can't walk hardly. King says her husband suffered four strokes in the past and requires constant care. She tells us yesterday he was rushed outside, but because of the commotion had to be taken to the hospital. He got that blank look and I had to rush him to emergency room. They said it believed it was a, re a seizure. King later learned that SAFD officials blamed the fire on a power surge, which caused a fire inside her neighbor's house and a power line to break and land in their yard, resulting in up to $50,000 in damages. King says the fire quickly spread to her yard. All this was on fire, and I don't know how greenery can catch on fire, but all this was on fire. King says fire officials and CPS crews responded quickly. And they said, no, we, are, we, we acknowledge it was CPS wires that fell. Today, CPS sent us a statement saying, quote, CPS Energy's operations team detected irregular system activity, but no outages. The company proactively sent a crew to investigate and arrived on scene at the same time as the San Antonio Fire Department. CPS Energy continues to investigate the situation and is supporting the affected customers as appropriate, end quote. King estimates her damages to be around $1,000. She also says it'll take at least two days before her husband is able to return home. Reporting on the southeast side, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 news. We got another fire to report today. Fire crews say flames in a fireplace burned out of control, forcing a couple to leave their home on the northeast side last night. Happened in the 600 block of Larkwood Drive around 1030. The couple apparently had too many logs on that fire, which caused the flames to spread. Firefighters say the fire ended up getting into the attic, but they were able to knock it down quickly once they got there. Most of the damage in the house from smoke, no one was hurt. It didn't take long, just over two hours, for a jury to decide that Anton Harris, the medical center rapist, must spend 99 years in prison. He was convicted last week of raping and robbing a nurse in her medical center apartment. Paul Venema there for closing arguments today as prosecutors asked the jury to consider the emotional scars on the victims as they deliberated Harris's punishment. The victims of Anton Harris have been shattered. Though Harris was convicted in only one rape case, prosecutor Elena Altis was talking about four other rape victims cases for which Harris has been indicted. Each victim testified during the punishment phase of Harris's trial last week. One of them, accompanied by her service dog that she's had since the attack, was in court for Harris's sentencing. The defendant has sentenced each one of those women that you heard testify to a life sentence and he deserves a life sentence. Harris's lawyer argued for mercy, not life in prison. 30 years, he told the jury, would be more appropriate. We should not rush and throw away the key and just say, forget about it. What we are gonna respectfully ask is that you assess a sentence of 30 years prison. By their verdict, the jury obviously rejected that. Here's how it breaks down. 99 years in the aggravated sexual assault case and 60 years on the aggravated robbery count. Those sentences will run concurrently. Harris will not be eligible for parole until he served 44 and a half years in prison. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News.
San Antonio police say they're looking for two men after they say they beat and shot another man at a West Side motel. It happened overnight during what police are calling an attempted robbery. Katrina Weber has the story from the 100 block of Valley High. This motel stands right in the shadows of JBSA Lackland and San Antonio police say it was under the cover of darkness that someone pulled off this violent crime. Officers arriving at the Oyo Hotel around two this morning found a 23 year old man beaten and shot in his room. He told them a man who knocked on his door asking for money for rent started beating him with brass knuckles. The victim says a second man also showed up and tried to shoot him with a shotgun, but it jammed. He says the original intruder then pulled out a handgun and fired, hitting him in the shoulder, side and wrist. He was taken to a hospital also with a head injury from the beating. Police say they were able to get some good information about the attackers and went looking for them, but they didn't find them right away. Although this all happened just steps away from the gates here at Lackland, it doesn't look like anything here impacted what's going on there. At no time did it look like anything but business as usual. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We have seen it before. Suspects or convicts in murder and rape cases smiling or promoting their social media on the way to be booked and during sentencing. A local criminology professor at Texas A&M University San Antonio says there's often a deeper psychological meaning to those reactions than what meets the eye. In some cases, Dr. Durant Franson says it's an opportunity to do something unique or highlight something that others can identify with maybe inspire other people to do that crime or to show you know how whatever crime that they did uh, was uh, successful in some way and that it has a meaning to it. We aired the full story taking a look at this topic today on the news at five. You can watch and read that story right now on KSAT.com. It is something that hasn't been done in Bear County in at least 20 years. A public scientific poll that gives those that call Bear County home a voice. And believe me, politicians and policymakers will be paying attention. This morning, we announced that the Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll is in the field. It will ask people what they think of issues facing San Antonio and Bear County and about the leaders and public utilities that serve us. The hope is to get the pulse of the community on issues like public transportation and aquifer protection, but it's also to get people to feel more involved in local government. Policymakers should be acting on a data-driven information. When you're trying to convince voters to approve a tax or shift a tax, you don't want to go with your gut. You don't want to go with what people that you surround yourself with are thinking or saying. You want data. You want real information. And we're going to do the best possible job that we can do to give people the facts. Tonight on the KSAT News at 9, an interview with the Bear Facts Brain Trust. Four polls will be conducted this year. We're going to release the results of the first poll that we started today on February 11th. Looking forward to that conversation tonight at 9. Let's take a look outside with live care, excuse me, trans guide right now. I-35 at 410. This is a usual traffic trouble spot this time of day. No real reason for the backup that you see here. Just slow going as people make their commute home at 35 and 410. Meanwhile, taking a live look outside with live camp 71 degrees. You know, it was a beautiful weekend and it just seems to be going into this Monday. Yeah, it has. And we have a little extra cloud cover out there, but temperatures have been on the warm side and not much really in terms of rainfall out there right now. We actually topped out at 72 degrees and there's just a minor fluctuation in the aquifer down two tenths of a foot. But the pollen count has a bit of a headline today. We have four allergens reported. Mold, mountain cedar and ash all being moderate. Elm on the low end. So high temperatures were largely in the 70s, just a few exceptions out there. Gonzales 75, Pleasanton topped out at 75 as well. And tomorrow's gonna be another warm day, but look what happens. We get into Wednesday, big temperature drop. I'll tell you more about this and even a slight chance for a wintry mix that could accompany it. Myra? All right, thanks Adam. With Super Tuesday exactly one month away now, the Bear County Elections Office saw a last minute rush of people registering to vote over the weekend and even more today. The nation's highly charged political atmosphere, coupled with Bear County's growing population, are helping fuel interest in this presidential election year. Jesse DeGoyata reports the number of registered voters so far for the March 3rd primary 
has already broken the 2018 record. This is the last day, but they're here registering or updating their voter registration ahead of the March 3rd primary. Already a record number, more than 1.1 million and counting, are new registered voters, more than the record total of registered voters in the 2018 primary. With so many people registering to vote, how is it possible to verify that they're eligible to vote? After Bear County Elections processes the applications, they're sent to the Secretary of State that checks Texas driver's license and social security numbers that are provided. If those match, then the state assigns them a number, sends them back to us. So that this couple says they can be an example to their children, just like their own parents. Any children we have will be voters. You know, we want to make sure that they know what's in store for the future and who holds our futures. A family tradition is also why this sister brought her brother to register. One vote makes a lot of difference. That's what mom was to say, right? I think it can make a difference. I really do. This voter says more people now seem to be aware of what's happening in the nation and the world. And I think that encourages, you know, that, that gives us more of a drive to, hey, we need to vote. After all, says Samuel Perez. Nothing's going to happen unless we come together. It's got to be, we got to be united. If not, it ain't going to work. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. And you still have some time, just under an hour, to make it down to the Bear County Elections Office to register in person. That office is located on South Frio, just off I-35 South. Again, the deadline is 7 p.m. this evening. Or if you mail in your registration application, it must be postmarked with today's date, February 3rd. Coming up at 6, a shooting on a bus in California leaves one dead, others injured. How police say it all went down coming up. Plus, a new way to predict Alzheimer's before it's diagnosed, and it all has to do with the way you walk. A San Antonio mom trades in her stay-at-home job for a San Antonio police badge. It just felt right, like it feels like where I need to be and what I need to be doing. The story behind her decision tonight. Nearly 6 million people suffer from Alzheimer's. The number of related deaths up 145%. Early diagnosis critical for intervention. So San Antonio researchers are in clinical trials using a system that measures and predicts the disease. It's all in how you walk. Ursula Perry shows us how it can determine who's more at risk. What we are trying to um, understand is by examining gait, will we be able to capture very, very early risk? Researchers use this gait mat to measure distance and variability between steps, as well as walking speed. Embedded sensors transmit data to a nearby computer. That creates a unique walking signature for each participant. Patients then follow a direction that stimulates the cognitive part of the brain. So this time, while you're walking down the gait mat at your usual pace, I would also like you to tell me as many words as you can think of, beginning with a specific letter of the alphabet. This dual tasking, walking and thinking, uses the same regions of the brain. So researchers say slowing down or stumbling on the map can indicate cognitive decline. If I think I slow down walking or something or almost have to stop, and then if I concentrate on my walking, I cannot think. Many times I'm out there in my shop and I come in the house for something, and when I get in here, I say, what did I come in here for? Because forgetfulness like that is common in older people, researchers need more substantive predictors of Alzheimer's, like this pairing of gait and cognition. We hope to identify the pathway, how is gait related to um, changes in the brain, uh, and hopefully we'll also come up with some interventions, preventive interventions. The University of Texas Health San Antonio researchers hope to continue these trials through a multi-site study called Mark V C I D, which continues to look for markers validating issues in the brain that are contributing to dementia. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, it is very popular for <laughs> riders and I probably more popular for spectators, but oh, yeah. kids will have a better chance of getting up on a sheep at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo this year. The rodeo announced that Mutton Buston, a fan favorite during the nightly rodeos inside the AT&T Center, will also be available. 
at the fairgrounds. Oh, one of my favorite rodeo events. Love the waves. More than 1,400 little cowboys and cowgirls will have the chance to ride a sheep. Contestants must be between the ages of four and seven and must weigh less than 55 pounds. We have all of this information posted on our website at ksap.com. Uh, the favorite thing is when the, they just don't let go. And yes, exactly. Going and going and going and going. That's my favorite part. Yeah, those are all Some of great. them have quite the grip. Yes. And it's, they can just go and go. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. All right, so we've got an active weather week. It's a lot of changes coming our way. It's going to be hard to plan ahead. It's not one of those weeks where, you know, every day is like the previous. No, 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 no. You have to plan ahead this week, especially when it comes to temperatures and a little bit in terms of precipitation. So let's start with a look at our weather headlines because this will help you kind of get ready for it. It's going to be a warm day tomorrow, but much colder by midweek on Wednesday. With that colder air, there's a slight chance we could see a brief Light wintry mix right now, not looking like a big deal. And then a quick temperature rebound. So let's talk about temperatures. Right now we're 71 at the airport in town. Castroville 73, Pleasanton 71, Bandera you're 64, and Canyon Lake now at 67. And you look at the wider view here, no big changes other than Rock Springs at 59 and 64 in Fredericksburg. So look at temperatures tomorrow. We'll have highs right around 80 degrees. Then we get into Wednesday and we drop down to 45. So huge temperature drop from tomorrow on into Wednesday, and then we have that quick rebound in temperatures for the end of the week. This is all part of our bigger picture in terms of our weather pattern. So let's chat about it. We had a few sprinkles out there today, amounting to just a trace at the airport in San Antonio, and maybe a few hundredths of an inch elsewhere. But right now, the main activity is in Valverde County. Some good rainfall in western and now northern Valverde County approaching 277 there. And we'll have a few isolated sprinkles, maybe a light shower in the forecast through this evening. But predominantly, I think we'll be dry the rest of the evening and through the night. You see the rain we had earlier today, now it's not as impressive. And this is all part of a bigger ripple in the upper level flow. That's just basically over Mexico right now. That threw some energy our way, a little bit of moisture as well, gave us our clouds, and some of those light showers. Well, what we're looking at for our next system is right now basically near Salt Lake City. It's this next dip in the upper level flow. That's our next disturbance that's going to dig southward and with it yank some colder air down into our area. So we've been in the 70s, but that colder air is now in the 20s off to the north of us. And you can see the cold front already through Oklahoma City and the panhandle of Texas. You go from 37 in Amarillo to 63 in Lubbock, 45 Oklahoma City to 64 in Dallas. So there's the cold front. It's not going to be affecting us tomorrow, but it will as we get into Wednesday. So here's our future cast tomorrow. Another warm day. We'll have some morning clouds. Notice 6 a.m. Some clouds overhead, but generally I think it's going to turn into a sunny day. High temperature right around 80. Not much of a breeze on your Tuesday. Then we get into Tuesday night around midnight. We'll probably have this. That's when we'll have the cold front move through between about midnight 1 a.m. And with it will be some clouds, some areas of light rain. And in the hill country by Wednesday early morning, we can't rule out a light wintry mix. Maybe some very minor accumulations on some elevated surfaces. That's the hill country Wednesday morning. Then Wednesday night here in San Antonio, that's when we'll have a little bit of moisture move in and even the chance of some wintry precipitation mixing in with some rain uh, by late Wednesday night and early Thursday around midnight Thursday morning. So there's a chance that, that right now doesn't look like it would have any travel impact. So we'll keep you updated. Confidence is very low in this situation tomorrow, 60 in the morning, then 80. But then it's windy and cold on Wednesday with highs only in the 40s. Ooh, Thursday sunny and in the upper 50s and then it's comfortable again by Friday. Did you bring some of this cold air back with you? Seems seems as I, so I did, right? Yeah, I think I so. I didn't try. Please don't <laughs> but blame you me. did. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. All right, so changes in high school football, some of them major. I can remember when Holmes High School was a new cool school yeah. just built, right? right? Now that district is growing so fast, they're having to put schools in other districts to compete because they can't afford that, not have at least one non-district game. When we come back, it was a madhouse today, the major realignment announcement by the UIL and what a comeback in Super Bowl 54 coming up. It 
was a madhouse today, and as always is, as the San Antonio area high school football coaches and athletic directors gather the Region 20 headquarters here in the Animal City, where the University Interscholastics League unveils their district realignments. It's also a chance for the coaches and the ADs to formalize their non-district schedules as well. But the major announcement today is that both Brandeis and Clark are leaving the all North Side School District 29-6A, moving to District 28-6A, which is all of the Northeast schools. The reason the North Side School District has just gotten too big with, with Harlan now moving up to 6A this year. We have plenty of reaction to the big move. It's going to be a very competitive district for us. We're going to have to really work hard to be competitive in that district. We kind of had a feeling that might be one of the things that would happen, so not a complete surprise, but uh, I, know, I know the kind of coaches they have there, the kind of kids they have there. It's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a tough road for us, but it's a good competition that we're looking forward to. You know, it's new, and we'll work through it, and we're excited about the opportunity. Um, you know, our kids are, are good about attacking whatever it is in front of them, right. you know, any new challenge. Uh, so uh, we're, we are... Uh, we got to work through the newness of it, but we got to make sure we put our kids in the best position to be successful. All right, here's a look at that new district now. Brandeis, Clark, Churchill, Johnson, Lee, MacArthur, Madison, and Reagan. Now, joining Harlan in 6A will now be the Wagner Thunderbirds, who moved back up after spending the last two seasons in Class 5A. They will be reunited with their rivals, the Judson Rockets, in District 27-6A that houses some of the state's football powerhouses. We're just going back to where we were, you know, and uh, that district kind of helped define what we do offensively and defensively. So we're just going back to the district that helped lay our foundation and playing teams like Shadow Creek and playing teams like Harlan and those type of teams, you know, that's helped prepare us for what we're about to get back into. All right, here's a look at that new district. Judson Steel, Wagner, Clemens, Smithson Valley, New Braunfels, East Central, and South San. And for 29-6A now, this is the Northside School District. Brennan, Harlan, Holmes, Jay, Warren, O'Connor, Stevens, Taft, and Marshall. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It has been 50 years in the making, but the Kansas City Chiefs have finally won another Super Bowl, and it's for first for both Andy Reid as a head coach and former Texas Tech quarterback Patrick Mahomes as a player. And once again, the Chiefs had to come from behind to do it, just like they'd done to beat the Texans down 24 to nothing, to the Titans down 10, and against the Niners also down 10 going into the fourth quarter. And the amazing thing is that Mahomes led his team to score 21 unanswered points in just over six minutes in the final period to pull out the 31-20 victory. Victory. Listen, man, we can be down 24 points and give us a quarter. Pat Mahomes and that receiver core gonna make it happen. I had two goals when I became the starting quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, and the first goal was to win the Lamar Hunt Trophy. I wanted to bring it home, the one that has our founder's name name on it. I wanted to bring it to this family and this organization. And the second most important thing was to get Coach Reed a uh, 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 Super Bowl trophy. I mean, he's one of the greatest co coaches of all time. I don't think he needed the Lombardi Trophy to, to prove that, but just to do that, I mean, it just it puts all doubt uh, the, uh, doubt aside. And he's gonna be listed as one of the all time great. Coaches coaches in history whenever 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 he wants to be done which I hope is not a not anytime soon and right, now the longest time since the team has won an NFL championship goes to the Detroit Lions who took their last title the last of three titles in 1957 and our San Antonio's first are their rodeo road trip tonight difficult team difficult place the Clippers in Los Angeles early highlights for you tonight on the night beat all right thank you Greg yeah we'll be right back Now to the shooting on a Greyhound bus in California that left one dead, five others injured. A gunman opened fire on that bus as it traveled from Los Angeles to the Bay Area overnight. The suspect is in custody. Authorities are now looking for a motive. ABC's Romina Puga has the latest. A bus ride turned deadly when a gunman opened fire on board. The California Highway Patrol received a 911 call around 1.30 this morning. Passengers on a Greyhound bus traveling from Los Angeles to San Francisco telling dispatchers a man with a gun shot and injured passengers. According to authorities, it happened in the community of Lebec, about 70 miles northwest of Los Angeles. The bus driver immediately pulled off to the right shoulder of the freeway, forcing the gunman off the bus, the suspect leaving his weapon inside. There was some heroic actions that were taken by the passengers that led to the eventual uh, suspect being disarmed and escorted off of the bus. The bus driver continued on the freeway, getting off at the next exit and parking at this Valero gas station to seek help for six injured passengers. One of those victims, a 51-year-old woman from Columbia, died. The others were taken to local hospitals. Two are in critical condition. CHP officers found the suspect on the shoulder of the freeway and took him into custody. 
Police say a handgun believed to have been used in the shooting was found on the bus along with additional magazines. Greyhound says it'll help in every way possible with the investigation. It is working with police to see if the surveillance camera on the bus was working and whether it captured the incident. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. Around the world now, police in London have been searching the hostel where a terror suspect was living before he carried out an attack on a busy residential neighborhood yesterday. Armed officers shot and killed that suspect in front of Sunday shoppers after he allegedly stabbed two people. One person was also injured in the crossfire, but everyone is expected to survive. Police say the man had fake explosives strapped to his body. He was also apparently already under police surveillance when the attack happened. The suspect had been recently released from prison where he had been serving a sentence for Islamist related terrorism offences. This attack comes less than three months after the terror attack at London Bridge last November, which was also carried out by a former prisoner on early release. The Chinese stocks taking a major hit thanks to the coronavirus. The Shanghai Composite nosedived more than 7.5 percent, making it the worst daily drop in four and a half years. It was only one session, but it was less than feared, possibly due to the actions of the Chinese central bank. It cut rates, pumped billions of dollars of cash into the system to calm investors' nerves. Elsewhere in Asia, things are stabilized. Hong Kong shares actually ended the session in the green. Meanwhile, U.S. stocks opened higher today, rebounding from a steep sell-off last week as the global outbreak of coronavirus continues to worry investors. Somalia has declared a national emergency as growing swarms of desert locusts spread across East Africa. Government officials there say the short-horned grasshoppers are uncommonly large. They're also threatening Somalia's food supply and livelihoods. The United Nations warns the surge has the potential to become what is what it's calling regional plague. It says a small swarm covering up to one mile can eat the same amount of food in one day as 35,000 people. Around America, a woman who authorities say crashed through two checkpoints outside President Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club in South Florida last week made an appearance in court this morning. 30-year-old Hannah Romehild's attorney told the judge she is in need of a mental health evaluation. Romehild had been reportedly behaving erratically and dancing on top of her car before leading the Florida Highway Patrol on a car chase. The Secret Service and Sheriff's deputies opened fire on her vehicle as she approached President Trump's resort. Romehild wasn't hurt, was taken into custody later at a nearby motel. Her attorney says she was off her medications at the time of the incident. My client has a long history of documented mental illness. The sheriff's office has been fantastic in getting her back on the medication that is required, and she is doing much better than she was from the time of her arrest. She's facing several charges, including aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer. Investigators say they don't believe she had any idea she was near the president's home and wasn't targeting him. The judge agreed to transfer her case to a mental health court. She's set to be back in court on Friday. And coming up in the buzz, the 90s are making a comeback. At least one of the era's sweetest treats is. And why a popular store in malls across America could be closing up shop. All right, it's the time of the show where we look ahead, you know, two and a half hours or so to the <laughs> KSAT News at 9 that is, of course, online or through your streaming device. And we're going to start with a talk about traffic, perhaps dangerous traffic. This is something I think a lot of neighbors can relate to. Drivers taking alternate routes really near schools or uh, through residential areas to try to avoid some slower areas through town. We talked to some neighbors here in the Oblate area between San Pedro Avenue and McCullough. They are worried that drivers are speeding through here. And as you can tell from this video, this is an area between two schools, not one, but two. So we're going to talk to neighbors about their concerns, what they're hoping the city may be able to do about it, and also a father with the Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church here as he explains what some of the issues are as well. All right, speaking of issues, we also announced the start of our Bearfax KSAT Rivard report poll this morning. It is in the field right now. We will have the results on February 11th, and we have the full conversation. It's part of what we call a super block tonight at 9 o'clock, where I sit down with the Bearfax Brain Trust, and we talk about 
what we're hoping to achieve. This is something that hasn't been done in 20 years. We're going to ask Bear County residents what they think about the issues and the people that serve our community. And it should be an interesting, well, it's an interesting conversation, I can tell you that for sure. It should be interesting to see what the poll results are on February 11th. Yeah, absolutely. Something else interesting we're gonna share with you tonight at nine, Justin Horn, he does a lot of stories on small towns in our area, how they got their names, the history behind them. Well, when researching Hallettsville, he actually found out that that town between San Antonio and Houston has hosted the Texas State Championship Domino Tournament since 1954. So he decided to meet some of the players, find out the history behind this, how this came to be. And as you can see, it is something that is quite popular there still. Yeah, Domino is not just pizza. Let's check in with Adam <laughs> Kasky, who's back from his vacation, and we are very happy to see you, sir. It's nice to be in the warmer weather, I will say. It's nice and comfortable here. So looking outside, we have some low clouds in place. They're hard to see with the darkness that is upon us, but we still have those clouds and even a few spritzes and sprinkles possible, but no good rainfall around town right now. As for the rest of the evening, just a slight chance of another shower. 71 right now, but we'll drop to about 65 at 10 p.m. 2 a.m. 63 and tomorrow morning will start the day at 60 degrees. So your main headlines here, warm tomorrow, we're talking near 80, but then cold, blustery, and kind of a raw day on Wednesday. With it, maybe even a light little wintry mix. So we'll talk more about that coming up in a few. This KZ Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. The sport of bull riding can be traced back to the haciendas in the 16th century in colonial Mexico. Ranch hands from different haciendas would put their skills to the test and these competitions were called chariadas. By the mid 1800s, chariadas had become popular throughout the Southwest, especially in Texas. One event was a form of bullfighting called jaripeo, where a rider rode the bull until it died. Considered cruel in the States by the late 1800s, this competition was replaced with steer riding, which had become popular in Wild West shows at the time. Then, in 1935, a Mississippi rodeo replaced the more manageable steers with bulls. That's when bull riding left the gate and became the popular sport we know today. In the buzz today, it's a big deal if you're a kid from the 90s. If you recognize these Dunkaroos, you'll be happy to know they're making a comeback. After years of only being available in Canada, General Mills announced today the relaunch of Dunkaroos in the U.S. Do you these familiar to you? They're familiar, but I didn't need them too much I growing up. Dunkaroos. In case you're not familiar, they're cookies. You dunk in separate frosting and sprinkles. You should see them on store shelves this summer. Dunkaroos will be available in their most popular flavor, vanilla cookies with vanilla frosting and rainbow sprinkles. I haven't tried any, but they, they sound good. By the way, producer Alex said they're amazing. Okay. So he's All pretty right. psyched yeah. about it. Yeah. The meatless meal options keep on coming. Now KFC is in the game. A new plant-based fried chicken now available. During a testing of the vegan chicken last summer in Atlanta, the fast food chain actually sold out of it in just a couple hours. The Beyond Chicken comes in nuggets or a four to 12 piece bucket. So it'll be Kentucky Fried Not Chicken. Exactly. <laughs> Consumer demand for plant-based and vegan Vegan options have been growing recently as people look to cut down on their meat consumption due to health concerns. KFC's Beyond Chicken will be available until February 23rd or while supplies last. If all goes well, the company says it could make the product available permanently. Okay. Hmm. Forever 21 might not be living up to that name. The clothing retailer is selling off its assets after declaring bankruptcy. A Sunday court filing says a consortium is buying the retailer for $81 million. The buyers are reportedly two mall operators and a brand management firm. Yeah, Forever 21 sells fast fashion to mall shoppers. It's said to let girls and women on a budget keep up with the trends. The stores have been struggling to compete with online retailers in recent years. And you know, speaking of Dunkaroos, the 90s were a time when dipping cookies in frosting and sprinkles, that was a totally acceptable option. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Did you ever have Dunkaroos? I never had them. And I don't really I know of them. of them, but it's not something we had in my house, no. but I knew, you know, friends okay. had them, things right. like that. So, I just never think had. that's kind of funny. 
We've got big temperature swings to get ready for this week. I don't know where else to go with this, but we yeah. do. So get ready for some big time changes this week. Tomorrow, another warm day. Shorts and short sleeves, A-OK -okay for the kids. And then we get into Wednesday and everything changes and even a little bit of moisture out there periodically. And speaking of moisture, take a look at the radar. Nothing locally right now. You head east of town over the past few hours. We had a little bit of light rain uh, covering parts of DeWitt County and even into Lavaca County. Right now, the activity is northern Valverde County, and this is basically going to head into the Edwards Plateau, and we can't rule out a few isolated sprinkles here and there, maybe a light shower for the rest of the night, but I don't anticipate all that much in terms of precipitation uh, for the remainder of the night here. Now, speaking of precipitation, our time lapse actually picked up a few very light sprinkles here near the airport. You'll see a little veil of dark clouds hang down here right at the beginning. Get ready. There we go. They moved along west to east, or I shouldn't say west to east, but basically south to north there um, along uh, near the airport earlier today. 72, that was our high temperature today after a low of 53. So running above average, well above average tomorrow. 71 at the moment, southeasterly breeze at 14. So a little bit of a breeze out there, but it's a warm breeze coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Comfortable temperatures, 68 in Hondo, Catula's at 73, even Carrizo Springs 68 and the cool spot 59 now in Rock Springs. But you look off to the north and that's where we have the cooler air that's getting ready to plunge southward. Look at the panhandle from Lubbock at 63 to Amarillo at only 37 degrees. Even drop down into the 40s in Oklahoma City, and then we're in the 20s as you get farther north behind that cold front. So that's really part of the next system that's headed our way. That cold front's going to make it here by tomorrow night, and it's part of our overall weather pattern. Today, a little ripple in the upper level flow, giving us our clouds and even some light showers, just a trace of rain measured at the airport. But you see this bigger dip in the upper level flow over the Rockies. That's our next disturbance. That's going to drop our way and pull some of the colder air with it, move a cold front through and stir things up. So here's our future cast tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. And we'll have some low clouds in place, maybe a little bit of fog as well. Otherwise, a fairly sunny day. It's going to be warm right near 80 degrees on your Tuesday. So sunny and warm tomorrow. A complete change as we get into Wednesday because that cold front hits Tuesday night with it a few showers. Then we get into Wednesday, blustery and cold. Not only that, Wednesday morning for you folks in the hill country, I can't rule out a very light wintry mix. Maybe some minor slick spots on some of the elevated surfaces. And then we get into Wednesday night, and look what happens here. Even in San Antonio and Bear County, there's a slight chance of a brief and light wintry mix through parts of town. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Nothing to get excited about. And if we see a few flakes or a little bit of sleet mixed in, more of just a, ooh, wow, look at that. Not going to accumulate and then move quickly out of town. Also very limited moisture with that. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it and, of course, update you accordingly. But we're not expecting any travel impacts at this time. So tomorrow, some low clouds in the morning, 60 degrees. By noon, sunny and 73, then right up near 80 for the high temperature. With a good amount of sunshine in the afternoon. Then comes the big change, and we're down in the 40s with a strong north wind, a little bit of light rain on your Wednesday, maybe a brief light wintry mix Wednesday night, but by Thursday we clear out again and we make it to near 60, and then we're comfortable again by Friday with sunshine. So, yeah, there could be a little bit of a light wintry mix, but right now we're not anticipating any issues or anything major or anything big, just a little, little hit of moisture, maybe changing over a little bit. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. It is Monday, February 3rd. Someone who may have had robbery in mind has ended up with blood on his hands. San Antonio police still looking for that man who they say shot another man at this West Side Motel. They found the victim here around 2 o'clock this morning. They say he suffered from a gunshot wounds to his shoulder, side, and wrist. He also had some type of head injury. Officers were here for hours piecing together what happened. They say it appears that this may have been the result of a robbery. All of this happened happening really just steps away from Joint Base Lackland. The Northside couple is out of their home this morning after their fireplace got out of control. It all happened on Larkwood Drive near Harry Warsbach when the couple placed 
a few too many logs in their fire, according to fire officials. The fire then started to crawl up the chimney and attic. Crews were able to take control quickly. The couple and their two pets were able to make it out safely. There is no estimate on those damages. Firefighters responding to a used car dealership in Maryland today. Look at that. After several vehicles on their property began to burn, officials haven't yet determined the cause of the fires at the Annapolis Car Center. The incident resulting in a school closure. The local utility shut off electrical power to the area in order to help the firefighters battle these flames. And a new bakery is opening up here in San Antonio in just a couple of weeks and it's offering dollar cinnamon rolls on Valentine's Day. Cineholic will open Friday, February 14th at 10 a.m. Customers are urged to arrive early to its grand opening for the dollar cinnamon rolls, which will be served from 10 to 2. We have more info right now on KSAT.com. A warm day tomorrow. 80 degrees, the high temperature with some sunshine. But on Wednesday, here we go. Back down in the 40s for highs and windy as well. So a blustery cold winter day on Wednesday. Maybe a brief light wintry mix Wednesday night, but we're not expecting any travel impacts. And then we rebound toward the end of the week with sunshine. All right, lots to watch. Thanks, Adam. And thanks for watching the news at 6. See you tonight on the night.